five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back, mesdames et messieurs. I'm David Freak, Turley swapping in on the analyst desk alongside my two favorite supports in the entire world, Martin DeFischer, oh. Lunga, and Mitch Kipo Vorspols. How are you guys doing today? I had to pull a pulse on that one. I liked it so much. Guys, we're kicking off the back half of the day with the Battle of the Atlantic here. Cloud9 versus Fnatic, and who would have believed that this is going to be an amazing one. It's a long-standing rivalry here for the last two years, at the very least, back in Season 3. These guys fought in the quarterfinals. Fnatic won that one. Good job, Europe. I'll give Thank you that you. one. Thank you. But now these guys are fighting for control over Group B. C9 sitting 2-0 and so far. But if Fnatic wins, they tie for first place. Yeah, who really expected this group to play out the way they did? Yeah. I'm incredibly impressed with them. Mostly so because they have been so far at Worlds the only team to actually play around the losing top laner that I've seen and successfully do so. Ball's got incredibly far behind, partly due to his own mistakes, but mostly due to the way the team played and just didn't prioritize him at all. I even spoke to High a little bit about it. He said, you know what, 75% of that's on me, but I told him, I'll carry you, cross map him, deep vision, and it worked out for Cloud9. It's probably seen the Cloud9 lane swap, how they put all the farm onto Sneaky. They're fine giving Sneaky a one-on-one -on -one lane against the enemy top laner. So we need to see if Fnatic wants to use that for Huni because yesterday, their performance versus AHQ, I mean, that was sloppy. Especially from Huni up in the top lane. Like, he had a decent start and suddenly he randomly goes in like one versus two twice in a row and he just dies for it. We also need to see what the rest of Fnatic can do because they've been solid all around. I mean, Febber and Honest have been great in the mid lane. Reckless had a good performance. Him and Yellowstar, they have to be able to get, at least go even against Sneaky Elimination because that's been like the winning lane for Cloud9 so far. Yeah, and Fnatic, they just went back to old tendencies. This is the Fnatic that we've seen in spring. You know, just a little bit too aggressive. Ah, didn't work out. Keep going aggressive, keep going aggressive. Not the crisp, clean gameplay that we've been used to uh, from them in the summer split. So Fnatic going back to old mistakes, that was actually worrying to see. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's it. You need Fnatic to get kind of kicked in the teeth a little bit before they realize they got to play correctly again. Because I mean, after SKT took them down back at the midseason Invitational semifinals, while well, they dominated all summer long, and then okay, they got a close matchup against Origin. Their first game looked okay, and then like, oh, we're so good, we're topping the group. Whoops, AHQ is better than we thought. So maybe that's gonna help them keep it all in line. But we're gonna see what happens as the teams get into the game. But for now, we're gonna check out these starting lineups for both teams. On the blue side, representing the North American LCS is Cloud9 with balls up in the top lane. Their jungler high, the big shot caller, the MVP of this team, I gotta say. Incarnation, so good this split here in the mid lane. Sneaky on AD carry, one of the best North America's ever had. And Lemonation, the man behind, champion select here and a great support player in his own right, C9. And of course on the red side, we have Europe's number one seed. It is Fnatic, up in the top lane is Huni. Ray Nuvo is in the jungle. Febrevent, fantastic season so far for him. The mid lane, Reckless as the AD carry. Of course the captain, Yellow Size, next to him on support. And Daylor standing behind the team right there as the coach. This is going to be an interesting battle for me because both these teams have had incredibly dominant wins where the team loses their nexus like 23 minutes in. That's how both these teams really started their tournaments here. And we move back a couple of more games and now you've got a very close match between uh, what you got to come back to the favorites from these two continents. Yeah, crowd's going wild here. Teams are almost already in the lobby and this pick and ban phase will be very, very interesting to track. Yeah, because... We have here a situation where Cloud9, their best picks is not what we normally see banned away. The Tristana for Sneaky has been so important because he's been winning the laning phase, takes that first tower, goes mid lane, and this siege conversation kicks in, and they just take down all these outer turrets. Azir and Vega are the two picks we've seen for Incarnation. He's been playing fantastic on both, and they work so well with the Tristana. So we were talking a little bit, okay, what will Fnatic do? Will they try and target ban? Maybe the Tristana away here, will it ban the Vega as we saw yesterday? The problem yeah. is they're on red side, and yep. it's so difficult with these top tier picks as well there. I mean, so many different scenarios can happen. The conclusion that we kind of came to is that Gangplank may get through in this pick and ban if Fnatic allow it to be so, because R Riven is a notorious counter. We've actually never seen it being played out, but obviously Uni can master that lane, and there's other, uh, other champions available, and that would leave an extra ban uh, or an extra pick pressure on mm -hmm. Cloud9's side. Yeah, and because... Cloud9 in their lane swaps. Again, they favor getting farm on Sneaky. So this mm -hmm. Gangplank pick, we saw it on day one for them. Balls fell behind. He didn't have yeah. much of an impact in the game other than his very good ulties. But it means that if 
Fnatic lane swaps on C9, they can get Huni ahead with that counter matchup potentially and use that to keep Gangplank down and then again stop this siege come from happening. Obviously there are other picks we need to respect, we know Sneaky plays a fantastic Kalista, yep. but if you're forced to pick the Gangplank, that goes over to Reckless. And then later on in, in the pick and ban, I do think the analyst test made a good point, Febivan is a player that's notorious for just playing these wave clear mid laners, control mages throughout the entirety of Summer Split. And that seems to be a stylistic answer to Cloud9's very rotational heavy game where at one point in the first 20 minutes they will try to siege mid. And that's the thing though, is then it comes down to Cloud9's ability to become inventive. And it's actually one of the biggest strengths this team has ever had, and especially for High as a shot caller, is this man will never bash his head against the wall doing the same thing that doesn't work over and over again. Instead, High finds a way to crack the team open. And if, sorry, to interrupt ahead, you. Go ahead, man, go the ahead. very cool thing about High, 4C9, is he doesn't even require any attention. In the pick and ban phase, they're the only team who's not early picking a jungle in almost every single rotation if the lease is open. They delay it because the other members are more important than what High can pick himself. He's mainly there because he's such a fantastic shot caller, but he's also stepping up as a player. Yeah, and his mentality in terms of shot calling, I was asking him about it earlier when he's sitting ready to just to get into games. Like, you know, some of these teams, when he was watching the other game that I just played, he was like, yeah, they're waiting for the enemy to make the mistake. I don't like that style. I like to be proactive. <laughs> I like to get stuff done. And hopefully he brings that to the table because it'll be interesting. Yellow Star versus High in terms of shot calling. That could be a very interesting dynamic. Like relatively more passive, so they do fall in that category that wait for the others to make a mistake, whereas C9 is looking to be proactive. Well, that's the thing, though, is, is if you just compare how the teams function on an individual player level, C9 has two big stars as far as individual carry power goes. Incarnation, finally late in the summer split, got very good. He's a justifiable mid lane threat here, and Sneaky got back on form as well. But it's always those two players, always those two yeah. over and over and over again, whereas Fnatic can reasonably rely on three different players, three different lanes to carry their games through. So even just in a passive sort of farm game, that's actually better for Fnatic because Huni is likely to be able to make plays on balls. So I think it does come down a bit to high to crack that open, get ourselves into the picks and bans, and Fnatic actually not allowing that GP through at all. No, just going to take it away into me. We were just trying to see what Fnatic could be thinking maybe if they want to get rid of some of these picks like Tristana, like Azir, we've seen Cloud9 use so well in these siege comps because it's the only uh, strategy we have seen them use because they only played two games and why would you change it when it's working so well for the master team? If they don't end up banning the Tristana early, we could actually see it picked up on the first rotation. Especially now that these teams have been uh, learning that picking Darius that early may not be the best choice. Leaves up an, o an open spot here for potentially uh, one of those strong trading AD carries. At least ban as well from Cloud9. We mentioned it just before how they don't need to get a high priority pick for high because he can play multiple picks for himself and Mumu, Mumu, Mumu Shibana, is like one of them of course, standing out we want to see <laughs> but they don't value his jungle picks so early in the draft and also they ban away don't want to risk in case one of these top tier picks are open they can first sure. pick it maybe a Kalista comes in for Sneaky or he just says you know what I don't care about Fnatic in it because I can play Tristana into it because the chances of Braum right here it's one of Lemonation's biggest champions and just getting a big front line for Incarnation and Sneaky in the background but no it's Darius actually going to start with the top lane front line I mean for all we've discredited uh, I've criti criticized rather Darius overall. He still has a positive win rate in this tournament, I believe. Maybe today he even out, but coming in today, he was still 6 and 5 overall. So he's, I think he's 7 and 5 now. He won at the very beginning as well with uh, Darius. Or and, uh, and one thing about this early pick is often when he is picked, Lulu is still open or the other team is already first picked Lulu and the team picked Darius into him. And then obviously they get hard counter, they get kited around so easily, they get denied that execute or sorry, the kill with Bizolti and the reset. Now Lulu is banned away from C9, so they were setting up for this one. And they're really also saying, Balls, we want to make sure you're on a comfort pick. We don't want to have you just run down the list and then suddenly have a matchup that's not in favor of you. Galista, open now as well, has been very strong, especially if you have a support that likes going aggressive. Yellow Star doesn't really strike me as that play style, whereas Miffy is very in your face, and then having Fate Skull to reposition helps you a lot. And Fnatic. That's locked in, so early Sivir Gragas here, very, very safe picks. Yeah, two times already Fnatic's played Sivir. They really value that pick so highly on Reckless. The entire team benefits from it when you run triple threat. The movement speed, the team fight, the team fights they have, and again, the wave clear, it's going to give them is important. Gragas is interesting because normally Rek'Sai would be like the go-to second pick, but because it's against a Darius and you want to run a composition that can also kite back, Gragas offers more utility for your team yeah. than a Rek'Sai would just have that knock-up. Well, that's the thing, though. C9 doesn't really play around balls anyway. He's off in the side lane, getting a bunch of split push farm and, and knocking down turrets people leave alone. It's it's the other core members of Cloud9 that do a lot of things. So even just compositionally, I don't know if counterpicking Darius matters here from the C9 perspective. 
Yeah, that's definitely a good point. Their playstyle doesn't really revolve around him all that much. And even if he gets behind, he still has that peeling in team fights. Because this guy right there, Sneaky, is the one to watch. And looks to go with another Tristana. Interesting matchup with Sivir. Relatively easy spell shields, but Tristana doesn't get threatened that much, especially since Lemon Nation. He really likes playing range supports or Braum. Both work well against Sivir. Either you poke her out or you just simply destroy the boomerang every time she throws it. There are things though I like about Sivir against Tristana. Not necessarily the matchup itself, but more what happens outside of lane yep. phase. Tristana is one of these AD carries who's good at taking down towers in the mid game, but her overall damage when she's sitting on just an infinity edge is not the greatest. She needs more items. Sivir is these, one of these AD carries that can always force plays on the map, who can fight early on because it's not about her damage, it's about the rest of the team as well. So yeah. Fnatic might look to really speed up the game in the mid game and say, C9, if you ever group to Siege, we will hard engage with Gragas flashing in, another reason for him being picked and not the Rek'Sai, and of course the Sivir ulti. And again, he can always just play support for a carry for top lane Huni. They know it's going to be Darius up there. They can take their time to figure out what they want Huni to play. And It'll Fnatic are actually going to leave. It'll be surprising if they don't pick top lane here. Top lane for last. I would not want to play Yasuo no, and It is Darius. a flex pick. It is a flex pick. But Part, yeah. since, Fig, miserable match. since Fig just mentioned, that matchup is absolutely brutal. The wind wall has absolutely no use, and that's why Yasuo actually wins a lot of those matchups. So technically, this is mid Yasuo being already locked in. But again, it's Fnatic saying, hey, C9, you've been running Siege compositions. Here's some hard engage. Here's a guy who can instantly get to onto your backline and chain that CC. It is some hard engage, but at the same time, it has zero wave clear. All it can do is block some projectiles once they're at the tower. So if Fnatic find themselves out rotated at any point, that middle lane tower is going to drop and it's going to drop quick. I want to see if Incarnation is going to play the Azir. Now the Vega was banned away and he looked good on it yesterday against Rookie. He only had that one moment where he got solo killed, but that was about it. He was out farming by like 40 CS or something and always poking down the tower. But it's, again, it's the Siege composition for C9. No surprise. Elimination with the Black Shield is going to be key as well. Yeah, I love the Morgana pick against Yasuo compositions, especially now that Alistair's W has slowed down a little bit and it becomes relatively predictable. Clutch Black Shield can change the entire scope of a team fight because Alistair will very often flash in for the combo. Yasuo expects it to hit. And Black Shield could even be used against Gragas Barrel. Body time, so much outplay potential there on Lemonation. I wonder how much magic damage Fnatic has. Can they break the Black Shield or are they you know, forced to succumb to the fact that nothing's going to happen. Now, from what I've seen of Lemonation's games, though, his actual reflexes on Black Shields slow. have been a bit slow. I I think we're going to see multiple. We'll see some he'll hit. We'll see something he's going to miss this sure, game. Sure, sure. I wonder if Fnatic, they have an AP top lane in mind against this Darius. Rise could be potential, but it's just way too slow, really. Unless they move Yasuo top and take an AP mid lane with wave clear. We, saw the, doing. we saw the Heimerdinger hover. Wow. But we'll get back to the hover later. Oriana locked in. So one thing about this Yasuo into Darius matchup is one of the things we always look at is how can, or who can close the gap on him when he swings the big axe. Yep. It's very easy then for Yasuo to dance around minions and get close to him and get these small fights where the damage from the Q is of course reduced from the Darius. But Yasuo has to be so, so careful he doesn't get caught out. In top lane matchups, you always have to rate the 2v2 as well. So that can snowball it forward if Rainover can successfully gank for Huni. Then he can start maybe snowballing and playing around with that mobility. If at any point though, Huni dies and he falls behind against Darius, he's going to have an incredibly hard time in that lane. But again, they're looking at balls and they're saying, you have been the weakling of this team. You are not the focus of this team. We can take this matchup and then take it into these team fights. Where if we look at the amount of knockups, Alistar is there, Shockwave is there, we have Gragas coming in. So many ways of chaining that CC and getting the knockup to the backline and enough hard engage from Fnatic to say, once you start grouping, on the side of C9, we are going to engage. It's not like HQ had no way of starting fights or the mountain on a Rengar trying to engage. That's not going to happen here mm -hmm. for Fnatic. This is going to be really interesting. I want to see how well that top lane matchup goes because in my mind, it looks so brutal, but Huni can maybe do it here. You guys at home, join in the conversation. Hop on Twitter and tell us who will rise by the end of the hashtag C9 win or hashtag FNC win to at LOL Esports. We'll be checking in throughout this game to see how that one goes. One thing we haven't talked about is yes, uh, Huni can use his E to dash out of the creeps. He can also dash on top of Darius and right. greatly reduce that damage from that spinning blade. Well, as we get ourselves onto the rift, here we go. Who's going to be in first place at the end of the day in this group? It's going to be either Cloud9 or Cloud9 and Fnatic together. Otherwise, FNC falls to that tie for second at one and two in the record here. 
We move in with Fnatic actually camping a brush. You see this so often when they're expecting the other team to invade in on top side jungle to get all these early wards for the lane swap, you just hide. Raynor might be baiting and trying to show, yep. hey, look guys, we're doing just a standard five-man cover all the way down. I'm all here, I'm all alone. But this play, we've seen it multiple times already, to, to the point where if you see the jungle, you can expect that stack almost. So that seems like a very standard play. I haven't seen the blue side mirror this at all at any given point. So it seems only red team wants to do that. Lamination, confident. So again, they're only seeing they Raynor. Zero. They think for now, at least what Fnatic wants them to think, it's, just, it's only one guy standing there. They're going to check smart behind. That's big. And they, you know, okay, Alistair's not supposed to be there in this kind of invade, so they don't get deeper wards than this. And now this level one for Fnatic somewhat backfired because they didn't get to mirror what C9 just did. There's zero wards in that jungle because Fnatic were all stuck there trying to set a trap. It is up to Fnatic right now to at least secure two quadrants of their jungle. We've seen HQ fail at this before, where they basically got essentially tree buffed or the convention or the the similar thing that happens right now, where you just lose so many jungle camps in a matchup and you play behind in tempo. But look here for C9. Because they're starting in their own jungle on the top side, Fnatic could do the same near their own blue buff here. So no invades yet, but sneak and elimination, they're moving in. Fnatic are going to do the same on top side. These guys get spotted by a ward, but it looks like it's going to be enough to force Gragas and Yasuo to run away. So elimination is being a little bit aggressive. Makes it a bit of a slow start. So important thing about this ward is it means Fnatic could move away from blue buff and then try and sneak the wolf camp without being stopped. C9 though, are gonna check it. They see it happen. Fnatic gets that one and then back away. Same thing happening for C9 though. Completely mirrored with the two teams. Yeah, Yellowstar gonna be harassing what he can. Hopefully they don't give him the ability to steal. That's not gonna happen here. Ball's gonna get level two off this. Difference though is C9 is getting two camps at that side and got zone off the blue buff. They may return. Fnatic had to only do one camp and move away. So C9 get potentially more experience if they can continuously keep on farming. And of course both teams ending with four members on the strong side of the map for them where the AD carries are standing as well. Fast push happening on, on top side. Should expect exactly the same for C9 on the bottom side. And then look here, they have already sent back balls and elimination. They do this very, very often. Two guys going to the vent, but the problem is two guys is not enough. Four men Four members can easily dive too, or you just zone them off the tower. You see a Fnatic is already moving down with three guys and Rainover is coming, so this should not work for C9. Yeah, and Draft just like away. yesterday, just like yesterday, when Lee Sin is, or when Hai is on the other side of the map, that's when Balls needs him in the top lane. Again, he's not there to defend and they will get zoned off. Very, very lazy almost lane swap for C9 in the sense you just send two guys late, first of all, and then your jungler's on the opposite side. Right now, Huni could technically TP down to the bottom side and just take off that entire wave, but he's a little bit afraid of where high might be in the ascent. And he probably also wants to stay on his top side and get the tower goal, and then bounce the wave back. All right, looks like Sneaky's gonna be solo pushing this turret down. Did get it down to half, and even still on both these waves right now, just to, just to keep track and do some bookkeeping. All the waves are getting lost, but this will be a, the first turret kill very easily. Yeah, right. We've seen similar things play out over in Europe when Giants, for example, would try to defend against this European lane style, even with three members, and very often they would get zoned off and lose so much. So right now, Fnatic playing it out perfect. Bounce again here for Huni, so the wave will freeze. He won't be zoned off experience, and he can do with that wave whatever he wants. And the key thing is that Reckless, if you notice, he stays close enough to get gold, so he gets enough for a pickaxe when he goes yep. back. The difference normally would be you give all to the AD carry, oh sorry, all to your top laner, and your AD carry only gets the average plate, and he's a lot weaker then compared to now with the pickaxe. Sneaky though, as always, gets solo experience and farm in these lanes of so he's going to be stronger than a level two Sivir and C9 has to use it. And this is the funny thing though, is this is one of the things that Cloud9 is so good at is their actual pre-match like 1v0 preparation. They've essentially timed how long it takes Fnatic to kill this and they were able to solo push, but Lemonation already on the wrong spot here. Yellowstar and Huni both going for the fight, then Naga comes through and a level one Morgana forced to flash away. Maybe they didn't quite expect that. But Trisana is far out ahead of the Sivir when that matchup finally does play out. Oh, they're going for Reckless down bottom lane. Spell shield used on the rocket jump. TP in for Balls, and Reckless has basically nowhere to go. Somebody he'll pop, but Sneak is going to be fine. He gets away Balls. from the pole, has to flash to deal damage, and Reckless gets out. Hootie TPs in, and he's on the chase. He's got the knockup available. Elimination is still running around. He's trying to execute. Oh, the flash! Reckless is going to get First it! Blood. First blood goes to Feminine from Fnatic. And what a 
big misplay by Balls. That apprehend has to stick. You can even flash first to guarantee that you landed. C9 could have had a first spot, but instead they get turned around. Reckless lift, that's a kill difference again. And they drop first spot here. High. Reckless though needs to know that more people can be on the bottom side. Because we haven't seen High yet so far in this match. He only showed very, very quickly and then walked back into the jungle and hit himself. And that was good by High. He dropped that ward knowing the AD carry may go pathing into the lane. Balls teleported, but the play backfired due to Poor execution. The balls get to freeze now. Based on how everything that happened, that we've now got a lane freeze set up for this top laner, he can immediately catch up with Huni's money. And with the fact that Reckless had to go back to base and it has to hide, he's getting behind. But very important for both teams. First of all, you just said it. Balls, he gets the big wave here. He catches up then. Reckless is also, also getting some minions on the bottom side, but he's sharing it with Yellowstar. So he's still going to be behind in, in experience. And overall, C9, as long as Balls can get this entire wave, which he's sitting with now, should have an experience advantage after the lane swap. It's actually very interesting, interesting to see, because if, <laughs> if that initial if that initial screw-up didn't happen, C9 could have been vastly ahead of Fnatic here. Yeah. Not for Elimination dying. The 400 gold first blood, no assists, so 400 gold worth there. You can see Fnatic up 300 right now in this game. 3-2 to two based on how that all goes, but it's got pushed in. Sneaky was able to back for a BF sword, so he's got an item lead over that Sivir. Remember, though, the time it cost Feverman to path all the way to the top to chase Lamination, he also used his flash, so he invested a lot into that kill, so overall it wasn't that bad of a trade if you look at the big picture. Really the only difference I would like to see in the C9 lane, so now that they do favor the farming experience on, on Sneaky, is just keep balls to 2v2 jungle a bit longer with high, because there's no reason for him to walk into that top lane and just get zoned off, but again, it works because Sneaky gets so far ahead. Let's see what happens here, though. Reno is coming in. Goes to the pull under the turret. Gonna get knocked up there, but the slows come through. Hootie takes a bit of damage, but Falls can't ult. He doesn't have enough. The kill comes through to Hootie. Assist for Rainover. Rainover coming in first. Hits the minion, but it was still enough to get the kill. No flash for Balls. And High now looking to fight. Pretty aggressive. Hootie's gonna have knock up in two more Qs. Fighting over the Gromp. Smite is up for Rainover. Easy pick up. Level five now. Rainover out leveling High in this one. Big turnarounds happening here. We see so so many small things with TP down behind someone if he overextends. Elimination got chased around and now he had the 1v2 against balls with no flash was enough to give another kill for Fnatic. Cloud9 keep this up though. They may be about to do their signature move. They just pushed in bottom. Feverman has to base in the mid lane. This could be a little bit of damage on that mid lane tower. We've crossed seven minutes so that, that debuff that reduces all your attack damage has dropped down. Sneaky's got level three explosive charge. This could be some real if damage. If they know he's in base, this could be a good push. We need to see Yellowstar also leave this bottom lane. He's sitting and holding hands with Reckless against nothing really because it's just big waves being pushed against each other. So now he's rotating extremely late compared to Elimination and he's not here to assist Febben before now. Well, gets it down to half, but the wave clear is good enough. Febben gets back in the lane. All is well. This is something we've seen Cloud9 do every single game so far. Push up bot with Sneaky in a push and experience advantage. Rotate mid, find an opening, whether there's no wave clear there, the wave clear is in base. And somehow they managed to do it again, even against a team that generally prepares so well for their opponents. And I almost think C9 is happy that teams ban Vega and not the Azir for incarnation. Because when you play Azir with this Nash's Tooth build, the way you can instant shove waves in the early game so, so quickly means this rotation is even more effective with Tristana and they keep using it now. Balls at six. Huni's only five. There's going to be so much damage available. The Q lands on the blade. That's the easy kill. Dunk not required. First kill of the game for Cloud9. Yeah, your wind wall means nothing here at all. Maybe a sonic wave, but so much damage on Balls. And somehow, even though we keep talking about how he gets put behind, that massive freeze that we pointed out earlier, that propelled Balls forward and then a good gank from high. That was what Cloud9 was famous for back in Season 3 when Meteos and Balls played together. Balls would always find a way to push the wave on level 6, have the momentary XP advantage, and dive the turret with the jungler. Textbook, Arena didn't see it coming. And more importantly, how is Huni going to continue playing? Yesterday, when he made a mistake, he tried to make up for it too quickly and kept on adding to the mistake pile. Instant teleport to match it out. Now he's down 20 CS. Gotta keep our eyes on him, and especially the player camp too, if he's going to be emotionally affected by these plays. And we just keep seeing the same move for C9. Incarnation instantly push out the wave. Sneaky walks in because he already pushed, in, uh, pushed the bottom side. Now he has to go down and catch the wave, but he's still fine because he keeps slowly chipping away in the mid tower. And it's how this siege composition always gets rolling. And then add in the fact that now Balls is winning. 
it's just making it even better for C9 compared to the two other games we have seen. You know what's funny though is they've cashed in all those sneaky CS lead. He was up roughly double for Reckless, but with all those trips back down to mid lane, Reckless is completely caught up on this Sivir now and it's a threat again. I will be happy to trade CS for taking down these towers though, because again, Reckless catching up means he didn't do anything other than just farm minions. Sneak is always applying pressure on, on the towers. More importantly, if you look at the efficiency of the build path, having to invest early in Boots 2 with a pickaxe as opposed to Sneaky, who can now base add up more damage. He doesn't need mobility, he just needs to get into that mid lane and whack away on that tower, which is very high AD. Right now, Rainover. Pull in, the dunk comes through and Balls gets it. He's got the Noxian might if he can reach Hooney. It's an easy kill. High gets the kick flash. The dunk comes through, a double kill for Balls. So Fnatic is falling behind in the top side of the map, and yet they were looking to make a play. Huni's only level 6 right now. These components for him to watch the static shift doesn't make him very strong. Getting a static shift though is a big power spike, but before he has that, you don't really want to take any fights when you're already falling behind. Greedy play from Fnatic on the top side, C9 responds perfectly. I'll start placing the pink. C9 is aware of it, but good, good kick as well from high kick flash into the dunk. That was a beautiful combo overall, and that is just has to give you so much confidence in this game as well. C9, they're heading gold, but more importantly, they're heading map pressure. Let's watch it again. Raynor actually goes into contest to but uses his gap closer doing so. And again, Lemonation is here, ready to join the fight. Yellow is trying, but he's on the other side. And look here, so first kill comes in. What High does is also super smart because he knows he's very low, so in case Huni gets off his ulti, but then he just flashes, kicks him back, and he's not at any danger. And so greedy. Rainover could have flashed that binding. He saw it coming, but he thought he could live. He also decided to use his gap closer aggressively. So Fnatic simply not respecting C9. Now Fevin's getting Whoa. jumped on in mid. He's zoned up. Back shield. Yeah. The shield's gonna be fine. Not a lot of damage taken on either side on this. Then he gets pushed out. You just gotta be careful though next to that ball. Good shockwave down to 500 health. Summoner heal forced out of this. Doesn't care about your ball. Shoot I mean, you in the face. He's got two on his team. They got good walls around it as well for C9 on the bottom side. So, sorry for Fnatic on the bottom side. C9 is taking more on the top side for them. But they don't really care about this vision coming in for Fnatic at the moment because they're just moving so easily between the lanes. It should be very predictable because whenever C9 is pushed out the bottom side and Sneaky goes missing, well, he's obviously running mid to push the tower. So that vision for Fnatic right now, they haven't really been able to use it. And it's just Febrin sitting, trying his best to wave clear while Reckless is constantly sitting in a side lane, catching up or trying to catch up at least. Now right now it's an 800 gold game, C9's lead, turrets equivalent, dragons none taken, one kill up. What I do like about this game is that we haven't really seen an early dragon because it puts you so far behind in lane swap situations. They rather trade the potential time that it took them to do dragon to hit towers and create map pressure, open up the map, then get the vision and then easily pick up. This is about the time they come out can actually start looking to pretty much get a free dragon. Hey, we just talked about how Yasuo needs that static ship as the first big spike for him. It is completed for Hoonian. Instantly, Fnatic is saying, okay guys, we have fallen behind on the map. Our mid tower is slowly but surely going down. We might need to force a fight and get this Yasuo into the back line to get him back in the game. C9 can even just trade a Dragon for mid tower here, even though it's already low. It could be a favorable trade that they could leave balls in the top lane and get teleport advantage, but they opt to fight. Well, this is gonna be a bit tricky. Well, Fnatic is on the wrong side right now, so if C9 just stays mid, they will get the tower for free and there's nothing Fnatic can do. So they're getting the both of both worlds, honestly, here. They stop the Dragon, get the tower, and again, Fnatic is not getting the fight. Huni is just so far behind. This should be their Dragon now. With that mid turret up, they have perennial control over this lane. Yeah. They get ahead in terms of pressure though, they do have teleport advantage. So Fnatic have been known for having fantastic teleports earlier in the season when they were just playing smarter, quicker and better than the other teams. But right now, C9 seem to have their number. 1700 gold lead, two turrets to one, one dragon to zero. Cloud9 got to have their cake and eat it too. Mid got pushed and they got that dragon. As you mentioned, they did cash in the summoner teleport from Ball. So, yeah, yeah, if I could teleport, for a turret and a dragon, I'd hit that on cooldown. Every single time. They're already down towards the bottom side. That's always the beautiful thing about Tristana and Azir. They're never really going to stop pushing your towers. They're just going to look for the next one. And they're going for it. The wave is reckless at the moment. Peppermint is stuck in mid lane because C9 is always pushing minions All five. faster. All five are here and this re Enforcements are slowly walking in. Huni is still pushing the top lane out, but top or bot lane tier 2 will already fall out of this one. Yesterday, C9 played Azir, Tristana, and Balls was behind. 
on his top lane champion, and he kind of didn't do much in the early game, but still worked later in the game. Now Pulse is actually ahead. So these should be some very destructive team fights for Cloud9 later on, especially once we start approaching Baron timing. Those baits will be punished very, very hard. There's a small benefit here for C9 after that bottom lane tier 2 turret goes down. Their outer is still up, which means C9 can actually push the wave even farther and often reduce the chance for Reckless to actually kill the outer turret as a trade for something else. C9's ability to push top lane with their AD carry is actually here. We're only 15 minutes in. They've yeah. already taken out three towers. Top lane tier 1 is still alive. And Fnatic has barely been able to do anything in a response because they're always just trying to catch up. Keep highlighting how fast C9 can push the waves and then rotate before Fnatic can even react. And unless we see that hard engage 5 versus 5, Fnatic won't be able to stop this push from happening. C9 are punishing Fnatic here for opting so many, so much power into the team fight. Just picking that Sivir early, just picking it for the team, really hasn't done anything in this matchup. Sacrifice some farm to get Huni ahead. Huni then misplay Garkar. How does Fnatic really answer this? They need to force a favorable team fight with a good shockwave somewhere, but. I don't think C9 will let that happen. I think you have to sacrifice your top tower and just hard engage in these three guys down the bottom side with teleport. TP advantage. And just try Here we and go. get that fight and the tower. He's TPing in now behind them, so they're going for it. Flash engage comes in. Black Shield onto Sneaky. High can disengage someone with the kick. Flashes in and binds on different people. High's the first kill, though. Goes to Reckless. Hooney's on the chase. Sneaky has to flash away. A one for nothing so far. Fnatic top lane outer should be going Get down. Him. But the flash engage. Holy cow! by himself and that was the play to make for Fnatic because you're just slowly losing but you had that TP advantage you guys highlighted earlier yes the tower will go down but you get the bot tower as well and two kills yellow star though for Whoa. some reason just died in the wrong spot didn't pop his ulti again this is similar to yesterday C9 was making a losing play but then somehow Incarnation shows up and gets two kills right now he's zoning up three members keeping four of them busy top falls is walking away at the top tower well, Lemon walks in and gets himself killed on this one. Four assists. Well, kill, assist and kill him for his three assists. There we go. But every death from uh, Lemon Nation so far has bought so much time that Cloud9 can use and invest mostly into tower pushes. They don't care about dying if it buys them time to get this tower. And Balls is going to pick it up. Cloud9 exactly. actually able to use Balls as a battering ram here. A good matchup. I'm still a little curious that Huni picked into it. But C9 also setting up that, that laner has gone well. So again, it is the correct play to pull here. The Black Shield on Sneak and Huni's not here just yet to jump on any target. So right now C9 is just buying so much time for Balls and for Incarnation to move down from this mid lane in the end. Fnatic invest more than they wanted to to get these kills. Actually, I think Huni going back into creeps, Sneaky thought he didn't have any flash. That's why he re-approached, because otherwise he would have assumed Huni would have already flashed on him. Huni actually did have flash and surprised Sneaky there. Good move by him. A little greedy on Sneaky's side, but overall, we can always see how much value that Black Shield is going to bring later into the fights. Once Sneaky picks up two, three items, gets more mobility, he's going to be very hard to catch. And you saw even his reflexes were good enough to uh, buffer Rocket up against the body slam flash as well. He was even able to get away from most of it himself. Yeah, because that Black Shield was late. Yep. And luckily for him, it didn't get absorbed by the body slam and then Yasuo Q couldn't block it. Yeah, I think Fnatic went a little bit too early, honestly, because Huni was running from that ward at the red buff and he was trying to get in range but just wasn't there when the engage happened. I didn't see if the minions were dying for Fnatic and it was kind of like the last call to go in, but just... A little bit too early, they get the kills, they get a tower, but of course because C9 could take two up on the top side, they're still gonna be okay. Definitely need to keep our eyes on Yellow Star too, he's usually the one to at least make a good play and engage, but so far, hasn't really showed up on that Alistar. Let's see if he can finally get a flank somewhere and set up Huni for that combo. Around this mid lane. C9 for the last 5-6 minutes have had full control when it comes to the vision. A lot of defensive pink wards always being invested from them. They respect what Rainer and Yellowstar can do when it comes to roaming into the enemy jungle, take control and set up some of these dives here. And it's very smart when you have the TP disadvantage. If you just try and keep them out of your jungle, don't give a, a good teleport location for Huni. He found one though, mm -hmm. but still he had to run quite far around and it was enough time for C9 to respond to that. And well, what's going to be important then, and as we get ourselves into this dragon, 38 seconds away, Balls has TP, Huni does not, probably there's not many turrets to kill, it's only mid lane tier 2. Yeah, this time there's no cross map objectives really for that dragon, unless you count Baron Vision as one of them, so we may actually see a fight. Both these teams are known to take Baron instead of a dragon. Right at 20 minutes, the European and North American LCS 
the, the most common to have early Barons in. And I'm just looking at the confidence from Incarnation on this Azir. Always just standing there, poking away in Fnatic. He was stopping the recalls before. He's been pushing his lane 24-7. Not really being afraid of anything. And whenever he can perform like this, it opens up for Sneaky then to become that tower killing monster and really give the goal lead to C9. Team Bite will break out here. Darius is running down as well from the top side. And Yellowstar is Yellow up for flank. flank. Let's see if it comes in here. We've got the team skirting around. 800 health left on Dragon. Easily picked up for Rainover. I will not find his way in just yet. The All Star is low, but he's on Alistair, so who cares about this one? Mid lane is under control for C9 if they want it. They're going to fight over Blue Buff for a second. I fight into choke point here. Look for the Oriana Shockwave coming in. Oh, balls is low. Knock up on the one. They're going to go right for the Darius. Has to flash away. The knockback still coming through. Reckless gets a nice crit. And the bounce come through, but now mid lane again is here for Cloud9 first. The team is still coming around. Huni does not have ultimate. That is an important cooldown miss, but Shockwave is up, as is Yellow Stars. And again, we see the value of that black shield. Yellow Star flank got completely negated, and then he didn't chain combo. Balls down there. Balls could and would or should have died rather in that combo, but he managed to flash out in between the knockups. So, slightly misplayed that from Fnatic. And again, they left their mid lane open. Yeah, like their positioning for C9 after Dragon went down, said, you know what? We're just gonna zone you to the right side then so you can quickly get back and defend your tower and at least get some damage on it, but not risking going into a straight up 5 vs 5 team fight which is exactly what Fnatic wants. So they keep just avoiding the thing Fnatic wants the most. Yeah, there's a tremendous amount of zone control really on that Fnatic lineup. You have Saber who can relatively tend to herself in these team fights, walk forward, backwards with a lot of mobility. Then you add Oriana Ball to that equation. And if you add a wind ball well placed in a choke point, it becomes incredibly hard for C9 members to follow up on a lot of damage. So we saw that's what Ball's tried to do there. Force his way in, but he just immediately get knocked up and the rest of C9 had to disengage. Interesting item choice here by Lemonation. I usually like a lot of his item builds. I think he's one of the more unique supports in the world. But I, I personally don't really like Frost Queen's theme, especially when you're matching up against no. the Sivir. I feel like matching the movement speed, getting Talisman of Ascension, and allowing your team to match that strength would be pretty valuable here. The gold you put into that item for no real defensive combat stats, you may as well have invested it into a Zeke's and just buffed up Sneaky. It is yeah. something we have seen a long time ago, though, against these Sivir compositions. So when she speeds up the team and runs that, you try and slow them down. But definitely agree with you. It seems to be the thought process behind it. Huni, though, he's not really going to enjoy this one. Gets a knock up Pop Seal. But he's going to get a shield back down. That's going to be enough to kill him. Oh, the oh flash! Flash it. Gets him out in time. It's still a flash down. Can you really call it an outplay? Huni's missing a lot. If you please, you can kill it. Not if he does flash. Really close. I was so close to actually finishing the animation, and Huni's even wasting a flash at the end there. And again, we so often see it's the other top laner who wins that one-on-one -on -one against balls, but he is, he's having, having a great game, honestly, on this Darius. He's winning those fights against Huni. That wasn't even close. I mean, he was so far ahead of him. And Huni even going for Trinity Force, so he's going to delay Infinity Edge. If you want to be a little bit more, if you want to be a little bit stronger in the one-on-one, -on -one, but he's so far behind, he's not going to get that in time. C9 now have four pink wards on the map, Fnatic none. And that actually tells a vision story entirely. Fnatic struggling to even get vision on Baronet. Literally two wards. One Three. lone ward around the Baronet is keeping them safe. And once C9 figures out what ward uh, Fnatic is reacting to, because you always change your behavior once you get spotted by a ward, then they can sweep it or it will simply expire in about 50 seconds. Then Fnatic is going to be in trouble. C9 can also just wait for balls to take another fight against Huni. And then once he's down to barely any HP or maybe even dead, you can then go for that play around the Baron and balls can always TP in. For himself and you have a small advantage a few seconds always matters quite a lot in these fights there's a small item lead right here if sneaky backs he has static shiv and reckless cannot but right now they're playing around the baron bait instead they're looking to find yellow star the knockback is there he will get himself on the other side but it's still 1000 health left on yellow star high force to run huni cancels, cancels the teleport but the rest of fanatic get out however that is a tp down balls in the exact same scenario Huni has to run now from the bottom lane, and there's no ulti for Yellowstar, so he's basically out of this fight. Maybe sacrifices himself for a knockup to be get time. Huni going in. But he can land the knockup though, and the thing is, there's no ulti left for Incarnation. It's gonna be onto this one. Binding hits on one. Farino was close by. He's gonna try to get this one. The kick comes through. Shockwave onto a few, and down goes the big members. But Incarnation took the Baron. Reckless on the chase, though, picking up a lot. Only one survivor. It's Lemonation. Is he gonna buy more time? I mean, it's a 1v4, he's gonna die. <laughs> Ace for is Fnatic! Even though there was the Baron, that is better for the European squad. And here they go. C9, you're running this siege composition. You're not looking for these fights where you're stuck in a Baron pit. 
We saw the engage come in, Shockwave, Rainover as well, and suddenly it sets up Huni and C9 are just stuck there. They cannot kite with the composition suddenly because they're at the Baron, and that was not the play they were looking for. Yeah, the initial play was fantastic. Bait and try to punish the support. Luckily for Fnatic, that support was Alistar, didn't drop, and they got some vision into that pit. And more importantly, C9, they fought without Emperor's Divide. They fought without one of their most important ultimates, and then they they bunched up, they clumped up, making it for a very easy shockwave, very easy combo. Yeah. Mooney, he was definitely in time, because C9, they hesitated. They walked back from Baron and went back. And that may have been their downfall. And this really shoots Huni back in the game. He's sitting on like 2,500 gold from him. Let's see it again. Again, you have this siege composition. You want to kite back, but you're stuck in the Baron pit. Sneaky, especially. Shockwave pulls him back in. That and was a fantastic. everyone dropped. Febivan, we so rarely talk about him, but every single game he plays, he's just consistently so good. And he's always that backbone for Fnatic. Even him walking into the bind there was exactly what was necessary because C9 didn't have the time or just the audacity to turn and focus him because he would not drop there. Then his ball was perfectly placed for that shockwave, even denying the rocket jump from Tristana there. And he really carried that fight. Huni came in in the end. All he had to do was press hard to pick up a couple kills, but Fnatic pulling the trigger. And he gets the Trinity Force now for himself. What I did like about it for him is he didn't never really had 1,550 gold to go back and use. So he had this cheaper components of the Trinity Force. It is ready. And now the fight is going to break out, though. Black Shield's oh, down now. They break the Black Shield. Yes, they do. And off on the side is high. He's taking so much damage. Ball's low as well. Team's disengaging back. Horba Hoonie gets the knock, but he kills off one. He kills off two. Fnatic completely in control here of a 1,000 gold lead. They grow out to two, and they grow for Dragon number two. Hoonie Houdini makes lamination, and Ball's disappear instantly. So far behind in the early game, but this time Fnatic can get him back into the game, and now we can start carrying. And he's going to keep carrying. 5-2-5. Five, and five. Everything's going well now for Fnatic. That one bad Baron call opened the game back up. And Fnatic said, thank you very much. Kicked the door down. And now they're setting up shops. C9 even had that mid tower they could have gone for instead. Like It wasn't like there was nothing else to do on the map than go Baron before. We're going to see another fight, though. Elimination of Black Shield onto Bolt. But not really the right target. Yeah, you can't Black Shield. Yeah, even though you prevent the combo, it's Balls is going to drop. Balls should have instantly flashed that. Look where Sneaky is. In a lot of winning fights for Cloud9, Sneaky is always positioning at the edge, continuously dealing damage. This time he is zoned. He hit, didn't hit a single target in that fight. So overall, C9, they were not on the same page. With this build here from Huni, again, as we just highlighted before, some of the cheaper components. So he kept being okay at least even though he was behind now he got that massive boost from some of the kills we've seen the last few minutes so he's really getting towards his late game where of course his Yasuo is going to be absolutely insane and the same we can say for Febivan just sitting in that mid lane going even at first with incarnation and farm but the shockwaves in the team fights they're gonna be key in the future for Fnatic and he's obviously already sitting on three items as well yeah, both these mid laners actually scale fantastically. Two of the best scaling mid laners in the game, in my opinion. So, going late game, it is still anybody's game because later on, Azir can turn and fight around, but the same way Oriana can. And being two of the best mid lane players here at the World Championships so far, both Incarnation and Fibberman had great games all across the board. Oh, dear lord, Lemonation Black shields himself to survive, but he's gone, oh, just out of range. Two ults popped. Barely made it out of that one. Barely. Oof. Fight was explosive. All right, well, Fnatic get turret number five. They've equalized this score for themselves. By all rights, this team is now winning here. And again, is it, a, it is a three-threat composition. They've got very big tanks. The front line of full tank Gragas plus an Alistair. C9 can't hope to compete with that. Yeah, this is the style we're used to seeing from Fnatic. Triple threat consistently similar to Origin, both European teams here. Real like playing that style, having a disengage or at least appealing support on the Alistar. Very often favors Alistar, used to play some Janna too, just to keep people alive there. It does have some weaknesses if it falls behind too early, but there's always a comeback potential, especially with Baron, because it's so valuable for all these carries. Well, baited all C9 in, and Fnatic felt good about this one. So 4,000 gold now puts Fnatic squarely in the lead as we crest 30 minutes into this one. A Righteous Glory now done on Yellow Star plus Distortion Boots, so a lot of flash combos, a lot of engage potential here for Fnatic. Of course, many of these members can set up for Huni's ultimates. And that's where these Siege compositions really start falling apart, when they can never get to group safely because there now are so many ways for Fnatic to start the fight. C9 then has to opt into basically what's going to have to be the perfect team fight for them. The Black Shield for Elimination has to be the Sneaky or Incarnation, whoever gets comboed from Fnatic, but there's enough AoE explosions yep. to hit both of them.
especially later on in the game, these fights don't happen that uh, that very often. So everybody has flash reel, and on Fnatic side, that means flash combo, flash body slam, Huni carry over to knock up with his flash too. So so many dashes and just flashes that C9 has to worry for, and they only have one black shield. And of course, C9 knows it's going to be all about team fights. So I quite like that. Balls in this game went for Randu and Zoman yep. instead of the Dead Man's Plate because you want that reduced damage on the crit. Obviously, reduced attack speed as well for both the Yasuo and for the Sivir. So at least he's, he's also building just to be a frontline tank right now. The problem is just the Fnatic is always going to look to get to the backline instead of him. Oh, High gets Black Shield, finds him and kicks a couple guys back, but he only gets Yellowstar the farthest. There's the knockup, there's the explosive cast, but no follow up yet for Huni. They chase down the support, there's the only find the pop. Incarnation goes in, he knocks back Huni! He's got a flash over the wall, balls can't quite Look at Reckless, Reckless is not but here. But they're still looking for Febivin. Reckless is pushing the base on the top side of the map. Fnatic disengaged the 4v5, and they're killing the base. Huni's in already, that's at least an inhibitor. C9, they saw that Regis were pushing, they thought to themselves, we can get a 5 versus 4 team fight. High went in, but I think he kicked back Yellow Star, and they simply couldn't lock down the rest of the members. Yeah, there was no way to produce those resets that Sneaky needed to clean up this fight and potentially then later on trade inhibitors right now. Yeah, High goes in, yes, but he selects two out of the squishy, like two of the non squishy members of Fnatic. They have three threats, but they have two tanks, and those two tanks were peeling in the front. Nobody was threatening Fedovin, even though he was out of mana at all. They walk backwards, teleport top, take a free inhibitor, and now Fnatic can easily control the game. Let's see, Baron has spawned, and C9 is already here trying to clear away the vision from Fnatic, but they spotted at the same time, so they're gonna be here and ready to fight. Not a lot of flashes though on their Woody side. Woody has a flank to look at the a top left. damage, 3,000 health, here comes the team, massive knockup! Oh dear lord! That's gonna be brutal! Blue team does pick up the Baron, the kills are trading, Balls does so much damage, a spell shield from Reckless, he gets crit, here goes Sneaky, the oldest oh, one! Oh, incarnation, but incarnation gets it! Two deaths versus three, Cloud9 come out ahead! That was a fantastic combo, going in, shooting his enemy into his mid lane to produce a reset to then get out of fight. That was an incredibly baldy play. Holy cow, and Huni never got to ult in that one, I believe. He wasn't there quite in time to make the whole combo work. But again for C9, they know when they're fighting in this Baron pit, well, how difficult it is for them. Huni oh, did. flies in, but exhaust is onto him, and I'm not even sure who he's ulting. I think it might be Elimination. So there's not enough damage on the correct targets. And in the end, Balls gets that first Ulti off, he gets the second one, Sneaky knows, okay, I need to get Reckless down or at least close to someone else. Incarnation says, thank you very much, picks up that kill. What actually happened there, Huni pulled the trigger too early. Alistair W also procs a potential knockup target for uh, the Yasuo ultimate, but later on you obviously want to chain the ulti on a triple Q. That's what Yellowstar was looking for, he eventually knocked up multiple people, but Huni procced it too early on the W already, and that actually meant that he only got the support and later on just didn't do any damage. One small thing about the mechanics of that ultimate is it does give you a small grace period to get additional targets, actually. I didn't watch closely enough to see if that happened there, but there is, sometimes you can get multiple even if you ult early. I really just want to highlight with these two teams, the calls that are being made in this game, how insanely hard they are to pull off when you're sitting in the heat of the moment, where Reckless is pushing down on the, uh, at the top side, and Fnatic is saying, you know what, we can buy time for you, and C9 is saying, you know what, we can engage, we can look for that pick, and now after, C9 rushing to that Baron saying, this is the call we need to make to get back in the game. And there's so many insane calls, and they're so risky, a lot of them, but they're working so far at least. And it also tells you that shot calling just trumps individual play. A lot of these teams coming into worlds with very highly mechanically gifted players, proficient, you know, in, in terms of ranking, so if you so so skilled at the raw elements of the game, but then they fall apart when it comes to macro play and C9. They've shown before what they can do in the map. Yellow Star now leading Fnatic through some really good rotations, getting an inhibitor right there, almost stealing that Baron too. Infinity Edge now done for Huni, so now all that's left to do is build Tanky to keep this man alive. Of course, on the other side, if you kind of start counting hard carries, Elimination finally has a Zeke's Harbinger done. Problem is, this Morgana is dying very quickly, and she can't buff Tristana very much if she's dead. So that is one thing to actually be a bit concerned about. Is Elimination's five deaths is a worrying trend for C9. Yeah, it does put Sneaky on 90% trade in these fights. That is, that is. If just, he gets it. If he gets it, which he can get easily. Zeke's Harbinger actually allows you to focus frontline for a little while. Mm -hmm. Once you engage, you can jump in aggressively because there's not a single person, maybe Fevin, that can actually outrade you once you jump in with that 90% trade. Be something to watch then if Sneaky can have the auto attack up time to kill whatever he wants. Blue Elixir picked up for Elimination, so he's gonna have some more damage in team fights. 
and a little bit of ability power for the Black Shield. Bottom lane is the target here. Even though Cloud9 is a team that had killed the Baron off, they are still the defensive ones here. Also, a lot of winning fights for Fnatic did come from flanks. And as C9 pulls back into their base, it's incredibly hard for Fnatic to make that happen. That could be something they have to look out for, that they don't over-engage because it's incredibly easy to play Morgana when all the enemies are in front of you. It makes Black Shield life a lot easier compared to having to watch multiple flanks, potential flash scenarios, just add so many variables to the equation. Still have to highlight there with this build from, from Elimination. It requires him to sit very far back to stay alive. You mentioned yourself just before here how he cannot be in the front because he needs to buff up Sneaky. So their team fighting power of a Morgana, when she can go in with her ulti and hit multiple guys, goes really far down and he just becomes basically this uh, Black Shield bot onto Sneaky. With his positioning so far, it's not been working because he has been caught out so many times. And Fnatic honestly looked for him as well because the Black Shield always goes on to one of the carries. So you aim instead for the Fort Elise, then you aim maybe for the Morgana and take them down first. One Black Shield every nine seconds. Black Shield can last up to five seconds. So that Black Shield buff could be very efficient for C9 here. Yeah, good coding on that Black Shield bot. We'll see if it holds up. Maybe Fnatic can decompile elimination and it gets a lot worse. Right now, Cloud9 trying to hold equal. Still a 4,000 gold difference. Means less over time, but we're still at a tricky part of this game. And there is an open inhibitor now. Fnatic can go towards and take that 5 on 5 team fight around it. Don't have to deal with the towers, but of course you always have to respect the fact that, first of all, running back to the fountain, healing back up means you can rejoin a fight. And also with these turrets near the nexus around it, it becomes very difficult to over chase. Which, funny enough, is what Fnatic's composition likes to do. Jump into that backline, get very deep inside the enemy base, and that can be tricky. So C9 should be able to hold this defense for two more minutes, and Fnatic might just say, guys, let's wait for Baron, let's play a little bit safe, and then we can maybe bait a fight around that area. As impressive as the out rotation was for that inhibitor up top, they didn't really get too much value out of it. A couple out towers fell that could have fallen otherwise too. The game is pretty even right now. I have a mild goalie, but a good map move can negate that immediately. Yeah, Cloud9 known for good map moves, but Fnatic have made plenty of good choices themselves in this game. Still sitting 14 to 8 in kills in favor of the Europeans. Hey, Huni's basing. He may be looking for a teleport. If he picks up home guards, he could use one of those faraway wards to flank potentially. Size not to base. Sticks bot. Fnatic doesn't want that very predictable engage, so he needs to probably sneak behind. Again, though, for Fnatic, you can just wait for that Baron clear that area because it's two dragons to two, so there's no five dragons happening in this game here. That's too He's far river. out. No vision. He hasn't been spotted yet. No pings have gone on him. Two pink wards on the side of Fnatic around this Baron. Or two in inventory. The they saw Huni. So they see him for now. Huni's doing wolves. Alright, now he's going to do Grom. And they see balls in the bot lane as well. They might square off easily. Baron in 50. Dragon in 55. Makes the dragon scary without ward control, which right now C9 does not have at all on that Baron river. Their site's still nearly empty. Only Lemonation has a ward at all. C9 is just trying to push Fnatic back so they can move into the Baron area themselves and clear away these pig wards just placed. So you have this fight where Fnatic is trying to avoid them moving in there, but because of Incarnation and his long-range poke, it's enough for C9 to get at least the first pig ward, but still a very, very close battle between the teams. Only sitting on 2,000 gold, which means he actually wants to base and shop. Can an item perhaps upgrade his boots into home guards, but this does give a favorable wave here for Clan 9 on the bot lane. That's what split pushing is all about when neither team can really make a mark or dent in the mid lane. It does become all about watching that side lane. And there is a dent to be made in that side lane. Of course, Balls has so much armor now with a thorn mail. Huni can't really get through him, so that's an unequitable lane there. C9 get that one pushed in as well. Always something to keep in mind. He really has to land that ulti for that armor plan, and even then, it's going to be incredibly hard. Yeah, he's going to save it for, for the big team fights. Going 1v1 this late in the game has no value really for both these top laners. Balls is he has the big tank in the front line. Huni is he has the assassin who wants to get the back line. If these fights go long, Huni can get multiple ultis off. His ulti is already down to 30 seconds cooldown. He needs to be careful though, so dashing in forward because Incarnation, again, he's always standing far up, always ready. He has a barrier as his only defense really. And then of course he trusts Elimination to give him the Black Shield in case he's too far forward. Elimination is out, actually starting to out-earn Yellow Star money-wise, even though Yellow's got three more assists there. Just it's a better cool generation item, honestly. We're gonna get a ton of money, and that can matter, getting your next big item in. Yeah, mid-game, nobody waits to give you those relic snacks. Eh? Time yeah. is long, long gone. 
even fighting against his own turret. And look at that, Sneaky was able to solo the dragon. Bot lane was still pushed out, C9 controlled mid. Both sideways pushing for C9 too. They have that turret behind them for safety. Now they're sieging mid, so they're using triple pressure on all the lanes. Oh, be careful! Here's the jump in! It's a two-man ult! He catches balls! Sneaky is out! There's a turret alive that they gotta be careful! A big knockback, and that's the kill into Morgana! Azir goes down as well, but the dunks are coming through! A double kill for balls! A triple kill for that's balls! Nice. Holy cow! They're all gone. Get back. A kill. Back kill for balls! Holy cow! That's why he's been picking Darius! Cloud9 at three members alive! And what an aggressive use of Flash ulti there for Incarnation. He knew he would drop in the fight, but he would generate so much damage for resets on both Sneaky and Balls. And it means they might win the game right now. Look they at the will respawn win the timers. 30 seconds. Would you believe it? This is the group where three teams could have taken first place, but it's Cloud9 who did it. The fourth that no one counted in. The seventh place North American LCS team. The Cinderella story is still alive. They are undefeated in the World Championship, and Cloud9 are three and zero. If you told me that C9 would get a pentakill, I would say, okay, it's Incarnation or Sneaky. But Balls. But Balls gets it. He had a great game. He didn't fall behind early because he got that massive wave in the top lane. And then in this last team fight, Fnatic even jumped him. Huni ulted on the, onto Balls, the big tank. But then we see the power of Darius. Once he gets rolling in those fights, he gets the first kill, second kill, third kill, fourth. And then the pentakill in the end. C9 finally feel like a team again. In the way they play around the map, in the way they play out the game, and more importantly in these team fights. Sneaky, he jumped in knowing he could die, but he relied on Incarnation to finish somebody off to give him the reset. Right now, Incarnation went in aggressively, possibly trading his life, but in doing so, he generates the setup for Balls to get a pentakill, and if it wasn't for him, Sneaky was untouched that fight. He could have cleaned up too, so... C9 became a triple threat there at the end. Yeah, and if you were to tell me you know, the matchup that C9 would win the strongest. The matchup that would be the reason they opened up the map. The matchup that gives C9 the kills in the end. The last one I expect would be Balls over Huni. <laughs> Huni with the very, very, very brave Yasuo into Darius pick. Gets behind in the lane swap game a little bit. The push comes in, the tower dive. And at no point was Huni ever, ever able to duel Balls. He got ward, uh, wave control, he got team fight control. Huni had some good moments, but Balls crushed him. Makes you wonder, this is almost the first time we can question a draft really for Fnatic. It makes sense on paper, you know, the combo comes out, but they do they do know Lemonation plays Morgana. Sure. That is a given. So you know half your combo can get denied. You play a very poor matchup and then you don't really play around it too well. So I'm still questioning the Yasuo pick overall. I think there were other options available. We can definitely see what they were trying to do. Also with having the AoE knockups instead of single target yep. knockups for him because then the Morgana obviously would just hard counter it completely. But when multiple guys got pulled up in the air, there were different targets. But I mean, every every champion was was a setup champion. Exactly, for, for Huni with his Yasuo. But really the whole setup for C9 to get this siege on the last tower where they got the big team fight was them so smartly just sitting around mid lane and they slowly via incarnation Force Fnatic further and further back on the map, and suddenly there were no wards on the side wheel. There's no way for Fnatic to flank, yep. and that to engage head on. And it's just a beautiful setup for C9 after they had gotten punished a few times before, and that's why they win the last fight as well. They also predicted the wave management so well. Huni was sitting on 2,000 gold. He had to base that gave balls the initial slow push. He didn't push that wave much more. He let it stick stick there for a while. Then he rotated in mid. Top lane was pushing all the way. And suddenly, C9 had triple wave pressure. And then usually what happens is the team engages in mid. But because of the turret that Azir can place, that kind of gets thrown out of the window too. And suddenly, Fnatic found themselves pressured back. And they had to you know, make a move because otherwise, C9 were just simply going to rotate towards Baron. And suddenly, Fnatic, who were in prime position, to take this game, completely yeah. got yeah out macroed. Yeah, and I love items. I want to talk about about uh, balls some more, but his item choices in particular. Uh, the Randwin's Omen pick, of course, is good in in the matchup. But the thing is, the way these comps were were lined up here, right? Huni and Febivin are are hitting the wombo combo. They're hitting whatever they can. So Febivin's never really trying to put dedicated damage onto this Darius, who stacked up 300 armor. Randwin's Omen, Thornmail, Ninja Tabby, some bonus health, and and all that. And this this guy's not going to die in a team fight as soon as that first kill comes through. Bing, Noxian Might, plus yep. 175 attack damage, five bleed stocks on every basic attack, reset, auto attack, reset, auto attack, reset, and he gets to kill absolutely everybody. And that's, as much as we, we are kind of questioning, 
why are people picking Darius? This was finally this the example why. of what Darius does. Yeah, but really here for Fnatic, their composition won these big team fights. They had two team fights at the end of the game, the one at Baron and now the one in mid lane, and both of them didn't result in a win. Even when they lost the Baron, I think C9 had inclination full HP and yep. even Sneaky was there to win that fight for them. So we didn't, we, we didn't get to see this Wombo combo that other teams have been able to pull off, really being used in the last few team fights mm. for Fnatic, and they always, always went on to the wrong targets. Still want to go back to the early mid game though, as we see a couple of Cloud9 members there at Lamination, and I think it's Balls there getting yep. ready for the interview. So far, every single game Cloud9 has played at Worlds, they've used this strategy where they push up bot lane, rotate sneaky mid, on Tristan, I believe, every single every game. Every single game. Every single game so far. Then turret pressure. They trade objectives wherever, even farm to get turret pressure. They open up the map. And then with really good vision control, they start controlling it. Teams will need to start changing their band patterns against Cal9, maybe get rid of the Tristana, and more importantly, look for those plays. I'm looking at the Asir even, because that's yep. the one that sets up the wave every time, and then Tristana comes in and pushes the tower. All right, well, a good game for Cloud9. You've heard us talk about it, but for a rift side look at C9's perfect run in the week, gonna throw it down to the shocks in the interview lounge. Thank you so much, guys. Joined here by Balls Elimination from Cloud9 after beating out Fnatic. In an incredible game once again, and Balls, I gotta go to you first. Finishing everything off with a pentakill after all the criticism you've had to bear with in the last couple of weeks How did you manage to come strong into this game and even pull this off versus this team? Well, all that diamond two practice <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know my team trusted me and uh, I accepted all that criticism and took it to heart. I just kept practicing and finally showed Lemon, can you uh, um, say a little bit more about that, about the team? Because indeed, we never heard the team coming out with anything negative because you were all one united front behind Balls. Yeah, I mean, I think Balls has played more solo queue than any other player that's been at Worlds. So like, he's been fucking spamming it so much. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah, he definitely <laughs> has. Let's talk a bit more about the game. And just in a series of games, you guys have looked absolutely incredible. What was the key to this one? Fnatic came out with quite a risky draft. Did you immediately have it in your head, we need to capitalize on this one? Uh, well, they did the Yasuo Orianna comp, so they have basically have to have a huge Wombo combo to actually win a fight. And I mean, if they get it, they're going to win any fight, no matter how far behind they are. But as long as we play our comp correctly and we're able to kite back, you know, and just kind of blow their, blow their spells slowly, like get a bind on Alistair, get that out of there, we should be able to pull it down. We were able to. And what was the shot calling like? Because it seemed like it was incredibly risky, and then there was that one moment where Fnatic got back in the game and actually aced you guys. How did you take it from there? Well, after the bearing call, where it was really close, and we got all got aced, it was really scary because Yasuo pulled ahead. He got like two to three levels on me. But then uh, we were able to take another Baron, and that equalized everything. And then it just turned to team fighting where I think we poked and played it well. Yep, and a beautiful pentakill at Worlds. That's a pretty cool thing to have in your backpack no matter what. But with this, you guys are very much alive in this group. How are you going to make sure this carries over to next week? Where's your ceiling? Because this is becoming an incredible success story. Yeah, we have a lot of room in this group now. <laughs> we have two wins over every other team. And, I mean, now we just practice for the next week, try to pick up as much cool stuff that we can and just try to come out strong. Yeah. Anything else to add or? Nope. Nope. <laughs> All good. Well, congratulations. Fantastic victory here from Cloud9 over Fnatic. Where will this go? Maybe you guys can tell us. Well, thank you, Shox. I'm not sure we can tell you. We've had, <laughs> we've had quite a time on the I desk trying to predict the, <laughs> the way that this tournament we're going to have to welcome Aiden's Iron Moon to the desk. Going to help us break down some games. And before we do anything, I just want to take another look at that pentakill. We're going to get that up. What a fantastic way to close out the game. Such a high-intensity game. Crumbs, talking yeah, so through the it. way Fnatic wants to play this composition is using all their engaged spells on the priority targets. That is Azir and Tristana. This is the main damage of the team composition. You cannot win a fight if you don't use it on these champions. So what they do is they go for a wombo with the Alistar flash pulling, but it hits only Darius and the Sneaky's too far for the follow-up. He flashes out immediately, and now the Azir wall is really the key for all this. It's a perfect wall, it hits the, all the melee from uh, C9, from uh, Fnatic, 
and then instantly Darius gets five stacks and the fight's already in retreat because Tristana and Azir are in a safe position with DPS. Darius is healing. He got buffed so he gets more healing with more champions around. And after that, you know, they should have probably just disengaged right from the get-go. But because the comp is so explosive, you all in, win or lose. Yeah, and that's that new Darius mechanic too. When he ends up getting the kill, that next person he hits, five stacks immediately. So he gets that massive true damage bonus. And this was a composition that I thought C9 they keep drafting it. They always want the Azir, they always want the Tristana, they're able to siege these turrets, and the thing is this Darius that they first pick is actually first picked for a very good reason. If you want to get onto Azir and the Tristana in the back, you have to go through this Juggernaut. So he's not a Juggernaut that has the problem of having to walk into the team to engage, because they're going to come for his backline, and all he has to do is spin in a circle, peel, and hit the ultimate. And I think this is a really good pickup here for Balls because it doesn't need that much gold to actually be that successful because his backline is the big threats. Like speaking about the pick and ban, I was so surprised that Fnatic didn't pick the Azzy first rotation. I was like, okay, they have a plan in mind. Okay, they give out the Azzy. Maybe they go for Poke, which is also good against Darius and Azir because you lack and engage. But no, they go for the Iyasu, which is bad into Azir and it's bad into Darius. You know, that was my worry going into yeah. this. Why I thought Cloud9 would come out ahead is because Fnatic does not punish the, mis the, the weak area of Cloud9. Mm. Yasuo into Darius is a terrible yeah. matchup. It was absolutely abysmal. And he just falls really far behind. And it just it doesn't make sense to try to... It's almost like a cocky move and saying, you know what, this is your weak area. We're struggling a little bit in top lane. Let's just have a farm fest kind of deal and try not to affect the top lane. But eventually Darius will outshine Yasuo in his current state. But what they tried to do on Fnatic's side is this composition is built to wombo combo you and one of the strengths of C9 is Barons. They love going to the Baron. This team wins more often than any other team with a Baron buff on them and they're more willing to take that risk to go after it. So Fnatic is saying when you take that risk, we're going to wombo you. And that's when they got that ace that gave Fnatic that large lead. I love that confidence too, because High is a new jungler, but to make this kind of calls, you need to be on point with your smites. Like, Oh, they were so yeah, good this game. Like, <laughs> there, it, it's crazy. You don't make this kind of call if you're not super confident with yourself. And there's no way mechanically he has perfect smites all the time. That's not how they're winning. Azir is getting these barons. Like, that, that it's like was. other people are getting barons. But just the confidence overpowers, overpowers the teams. They're like, Wait, really? They're going for Baron now and playing Vision? When does this happen? And you can just win games by mind games. Now, to close out the discussion, I want to take a look at the standings here in Group B. As we close the book, the teams are arranged like this. Cloud9 at the top, undefeated with two games over Fnatic, IG, and AHQ here. So, as again, as we look ahead to next week, with this two-game buffer, they're definitely in a good spot. But as you mentioned, Zyrene, there's got to be some fear around the fact that uh, their strengths are becoming very clear, that yeah. they seem to be dependent on a singular strategy. Yeah, the tower pushing very quickly with Tristana and Azir. I want to see what happens when you ban some of these champions away. They we're seeing the Vagar ban. I think that's a smart ban. But having Azir still on the table, you need to poke Incarnation more because the Azir is just doing so much work in these team fights, and it's really just amplifying the strengths of C9. And I'm really grateful that they're actually winning because I'm getting more time on the desk because everybody says we need analysts from winning regions on the desk. Well, there you have Here it. we are, you guys. We did. <laughs> Yamato, final thoughts. I'm just so surprised that Fnatic drafted like this. I'm still surprised about the Oriana once again, a weak matchup into uh, the Azir. I think, uh, as you said, I'm hoping that Cool COG kind of exposes this strategy with the fast push that both the C9 and COG is using. Hopefully, we'll see that in the next matchup. Okay, we'll see if Fnatic can clean up their draft. Good start for Cloud9. Now, we need to catch our breath after that wild match. When we return, it's the Coup Tigers versus Counterlogic Gaming as the action heats up in Group A. Stay tuned. There's more Worlds 2015 right after this. Save my energy. Yeah, if they're like, eating those Save my energy. Yeah. Save my energy. <laughs> save, save my energy. <laughs> it's an easy kill. High gets the kick flash. The dunk comes through. A double kill for balls. Cash in the show. In the show. In the show. See you guys. Come on. Make you the show. Make you the show. Make you the show. Don't fall in the fight. Eyes on them. Eyes on them. Listen, listen, listen. Eyes on them. I just on them. Can I cap? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. He's on, he's on, he's on, he's on. He's on okay, 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 okay. Balls does so much damage, a spell shield from Reckless. He gets crit. Here goes Sneaky, the honest one. Oh, the Gnation! Oh, the gets it. C'est l'Ostar, le Gnation! Reckless and l'Ostar! Le Cloud9 implosive, Natic Noir! Bottom! The Cinderella!
Bella Story is still alive. They are undefeated in the World Championship.